Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of AI Powered PM. My name is Todd. Today we're going to be working on answering a question that if you're a PM and you work in Azure DevOps, you probably hear all the time, which is, what are the items in the current sprint? So I'm gonna show you three different ways to do it. It starts easy and then it gets more difficult, but as it goes from easy to difficult, it gets more feature rich. So that's the trade-off. First way I'll show you is how to use Dataverse. The next way I'll show you is how to use uh, tools with a connector. And so then the final way is going to be using a topic with a custom workflow. So let's jump into it. Okay, here we are in Azure DevOps. This is just a simple query. It, it pulls all the ADO items. Um, and so here they are. Now I just simply exported these into Excel. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like here. Um, you'll see that here they are. I'm going to show you one other thing that I did. I did write this formula so I could have a sprint column. So when I talk to the model, I can address it as sprint two and saying, instead of saying iteration path, Contoso air iteration two, just easier. The other thing I want to bring your attention to is if I filter this, then you'll see that there are 13 records in sprint two. So that'll be important later. Now let's have a look at that same data. I imported it into my knowledge agent. Um, so you can see that it's in the dataverse. Actually, let me show you here. It's in the dataverse. I imported it, same data. And then I connected it to Copilot Studio. And here it is pulling from the dataverse. So it went ADO, Excel, dataverse. Now we're looking at it in Copilot Studio. Okay, now let's ask it some questions about the data that we uploaded. How many items are in Sprint 2? All right, so it looks there like there are 13 items in Sprint 2. That's correct. Let's ask it, please list all 13 items in Sprint 2. Okay, so it only listed six. That's, that's a problem. Um, I'm going to say, please list the remaining seven items. Okay. It listed out seven more items. Let's see if these are correct. Observation changes, security environment setup. Yeah. I've looked at these a lot. So let's see. Here's one that's just straight up hallucinated design tasks. I see design over here, but I don't see design tasks. So it's got a combination of correct and incorrect data. And this is where I went wrong in the initial demo. This thing's such a good liar that I believed it. Uh, so, but you can see that it actually will run into data issues, um, even at a, at a fairly low threshold. We're only talking 13 items. I can't prove it, but my guess is, is this has to do with the chunk size and the amount of tokens that can be in each chunk. Uh, drop something in the comments if you have a different theory on it, but. I don't think, I said in my last video that Dataverse uh, as a knowledge source wasn't ready for prime time. I stand by that statement and I did want to make you aware that I found a bug. Before it was just sort of annoying to work with, but now I'm seeing actual data inconsistency. So uh, not ready to deploy for the uh, ADO DevOps sprint task sort of solution, but that's okay. I've got some uh, additional ways we can approach this problem that do produce correct data. The first way I'm going to show you how to retrieve accurate data for Sprint 2 is in Tools. So you go to the Tools tab, and let's add a tool, and let's search for Azure DevOps Query. We're going to stick with connectors today. I'll get into flows a little bit later and model context protocol in another session. So anyway, let's, let's use the Get Query Results Azure DevOps Connector, and then Let's add and configure in this get query results for sprint two. description is retrieves the results of retrieves the items in sprint two. All right. So the default is dynamically fill with AI, but we don't want users to be guessing on organization name and project name and especially query ID. They're not going to know this. So, we're going to put these values in for them. So you select custom value. Okay, AI powered PM and another custom value. Okay, 
Contoso Air. And then another custom value. Now I've worked on this problem before, so I know that the ID it needs here is this value. This is a query just for Sprint 2. Okay. All right, great. Let's save it. All right, let's try it now. What are the items in Sprint 2? All right, so you can see that uh, it worked. It was pretty easy to do. It retrieved the items in Sprint 2. I don't really have a ton of control about what it shows me in terms of fields it returns back, or maybe I want to know how many hours are in it. Um, so it's quick, it's easy, it's out of the box. But you can also see an immediate problem to this. If you wanted to say Sprint 1, Sprint 2, Sprint 3, every Sprint you're creating a new one of these um, tools. So every Sprint you're creating a new connector to a new query uh, which is going to be very tedious and difficult to maintain. So, um, but at least it's got the right data. All right, so that's the next way. Now I've disabled both of the tools solution. So let's go into topics and I'll show you an even better way to do this. Uh, so let's create a new topic and let's use Copilot. Get query results for Sprint demo. And then we'll say, um, ask the user for what sprint they want to get items from and then return those items. Okay, so let's create that. And it creates uh, the trigger. It uses an LLM to um, summarize what it would, what it's going to look for and trigger off of based on what I gave it. So it'll, it'll this tool will handle queries like get sprint demo, results, show sprint demo, etc. Um, and then next it'll ask the question, which sprint do you want to get items from? Um, and then it'll return the message. So let's save that. That's a pretty good skeleton. And I'm going to show you just a simple skeleton of how this works. Um, so let's go in here and add a tool. And now let's do a new agent flow. It's only got two actions. Um, so let's first let's take in an input parameter and we'll call this sprint number. And then let's respond to the agent. Let's just see everything work end to end first and then we can add complexity. So um, let's call it text output for the name of the parameter. And then the value, let's say um, this is the user parameter. We're really just trying to see this thing work end to end. Um, so let's publish it. When authoring these, I found that it's better to see, you know, make it simple, make sure your inputs and outputs are coming back and then start adding the complexity in. Cause I've spent a lot of time doing the alt alternate, which is getting all the logic uh, in the flow and then having to go back and start again. So I think this is a better approach. So let's go back to the agent. And now you can see that our action is here. Okay. Now we need to pass it the parameter from above. So let's do that. That's the sprint, All right? We're taking the user response and passing it into that flow. Um, let's save it. Let's also, while we're at it, untitled isn't a great name for the flow. So let's change that so we can find it. Let's call it uh, Sprint Query Demo, and I'll save it. Let's get back to our agent. Okay, now it's named nicer. Um, we're taking in the parameter. It automatically detected the output that we're doing. And then here's the message. So let's see what it's what it thinks. This needs to be updated a little bit. So um, we just want it to return that variable we had, um, which was text output. So let's just see what happens. 
Again, this is just the skeleton. I'll show you the working one here in a minute. So let's ask it at this point, um, what are the items in the sprint? It says, which sprint do you want to get items from? That's the question that we put in there. So that's good. Let's say two. Okay. So we didn't get back what we needed here. Sometimes I like to troubleshoot this in Power Automate. <clears throat> I just like the UI better. Um, so let's go in and let's find this flow. And actually, let's see, let's see, let's see what happened here. All right, so we've got no outputs, or this is the user parameter. Okay, so we didn't do something quite right. Okay, let's see where we went wrong here. Oh, <laughs> we didn't uh, we didn't actually put in the variable. So let's try that again. Let's let's do this, and there's the sprint number, and let's publish that, and let's try this again. Okay, let's ask it uh, what items are in the sprint. Which sprint do you want to get items from? Two. Okay, so we get back the, this is the user parameter two. And then this is LLM kind of working, trying to outsmart us here. You know, which sprint items do you want to get items from? Because it didn't really provide the full answer. So it's doing a little bit of work. But the important thing is that you're seeing like an input and then you're seeing it hit a flow, and then you're seeing an output. Um, so let's switch ahead here, and let's disable this one, and we'll look at this one I did uh, earlier, which is more in line with what we're trying to do. So this is one I authored a while ago. Um, so let's ask it the same questions, and then I'll walk you through that. Uh, what is in the sprint? Okay, which sprint items? Let's do two. Okay, now this is getting a lot closer to what we need. Up top, it'll tell you the total items, 13. The total features, two, the user story count four, and task seven. Um, and then it'll list each item. So if I count this up, there should be two features, right? So here's feature ID three, and then formatting's not great, but here's the other feature, that's two features. And then let's count up user stories. There should be four. So one, two, three, four. That's good. And then if we count tasks, let's just make sure we got seven. One, two, three, four, six, seven. Okay. So this actually returns the correct answer, um, which is great. So let me show you that flow. So let's look at a pre. Let's look at this run. This one's more complicated. If you do want to see uh, how to author these and do a more complicated flow, just drop something in the comments and I'll show you. But let me just kind of walk through. So it's the same deal, right? Like you, you get the parameter, okay? Um, it gives you the output. This one didn't end. A lot of times you'll get lucky with these actions and it'll give you exactly what you need. Not so lucky this time. I ended up having to do a lot of um, calls directly to the API and then mapping directly to the variables uh, and output. So it was a little more complicated. It's not a great one to learn on, um, but you know, that's what we're doing. So you basically, you list out the iterations to start with, and then you have to filter it. Um, and once you do the filter, let's look at the output here. See, here's where I'm building kind of the, uh, the, the um, where I need to post to the API. Then you need to initialize variables. This is a bit on like the formatting piece for your output. Um, and then in here, what am I doing? Yeah. So then once you've got, once you've got all the items, then you're getting all items in that iteration and you're doing more kind of like text manipulation. Um, and then you get more item details. And then this is counting. Like you remember how I showed how many were the features, how many of the user stories, et cetera, this is doing the counts. And then here is doing the, um, the list for each item, like all the output values, the title, the ID, uh, how many hours were in it, et cetera. And then this compose just sort of builds everything for you. 
um, into a, into something that's consumable and then you respond back to the agent. So it's pretty complicated. Uh, I don't know if I want to go line by line through it. Otherwise it'll be a very long and boring video, but what I'll do is I will post this out on my GitHub and then you can download and import it. It might not work perfectly for your use case because, um, ADO has, is so many permu permutations of different templates and fields. Um, also too, if you want me to show you another video, how to actually take and import it, uh, I'll show you that, but for now, I'm just going to export it and you guys can see, um, that example there. Okay. So that's the state of the world with Copilot and Azure DevOps. As far as I can tell, I'm happy to be proved wrong. Drop a comment in and tell me if there's a better way to solve it, but there's two general approaches that we tried, which is first import the data and have the LLM reason over it, which would be a lot more extensible and anticipate new scenarios. I would have preferred that worked. It's not there yet. Uh, the other general approach that we're doing is more like a chat bot. You're going to take a user prompt. You're going to take inputs from those prompts, and then you're going to write logic to return the accurate answer. Thanks for going through it with me today and feel free to download any of the sample code we went through today. Thank you.